Dragon The Hidden World It's been a long time since people were highly anticipated for a DreamWorks animation movie. In fact, the last one that got this much hype was probably the previous How to Train Your Dragon. Maybe Kung Fu Panda 3 had some, but Dragon 2 most likely held more anticipation during its time. But the reason why this one is getting all the excitement from fans is because this is How to Train Your Dragon's grand finale. I don't just mean the last of the trilogy, I mean the one to end off the whole franchise unless DreamWorks would pull a Toy Story and make a 4, so there's a lot riding on this one to deliver the ending that one of DreamWorks most beloved franchises deserves. As for my thoughts on the previous films, I will admit that upon re-watching the first film, I did like it slightly more than I did back in 2010. I wouldn't overhype it as one of the best in animation, since the writing can be a little lacking, but still a well done feature. As for number 2, now that is an amazing movie, fixing all the issues of the first and even upgrading what was already masterfully crafted, easily one of DreamWorks best. So now that we've come to the conclusion in the hidden world, will this be as much of an extraordinary find as a white knight fury? Or should this ending be more hidden than the world? Let's find out. The Story In the film, there are two main plots that would continuously intersect each other. While completely different in tone, they do manage to work together where one would need the other to grow in order to present this big story that gives an update on the Vikings' relationship with the dragons. The first is regarding the people of Burke. As they rescue more dragons, they become a bigger target for hunters and trappers, which is why they have to set out to find a new home where they cannot be found. This part of the plot is the key of keeping the spirit of the franchise alive, as it holds all the action and the grand scale of the situations the heroes would get into. It's where it is familiar as a How to Train Your Dragon movie, but still feel fresh as a new continuation to the story of Burke with a problem they have yet to encounter. The second emphasizes the romance. While it primarily focuses on Toothless and the newfound female named the Light Fury, there is also a bit of a side plot of Hiccup and Astrid tangled up on the subject of marriage. On one hand, it makes the movie feel a little more like a romantic comedy more than the others, resulting it to have a cheesy tone that can end up having mixed reactions from audiences. It doesn't help either that it would also come with some of the rom-com cliches, rather they be for advancing the plot or for the sake of the gag. But this is not to say that the romance angle is all bad. In terms of the movie's story, it does carry the heart of the feature as it also presents the developing friendship between Hiccup and Toothless. That, and there are times when the romantic scenes can feel genuine and well executed to get engaged with the love aspect. With the two plots combined that have very different dynamics, it honestly makes it surprising that they make the movie feel like it goes by so quickly, like the ending would show up much sooner than expected. Speaking of which, without spoiling anything, the final battle can be a bit underwhelming and doesn't have that same epic sensation as the previous two. But it is understandable that it can't really go off with a bang because it has to make room for the big finale of the franchise to finalize everything, which can be a bit of a tearjerker, but would still count as a happy ending that is meant to be. The story may have a bit of the rom-com goofiness, but still holds strong by having two plots work very well together. The Animation One of the most noteworthy elements that made the How to Train Your Dragon franchise one of the strongest and most popular from DreamWorks is the top quality animation that gives a lot of detail to a massive world to make it feel real that there was a time where Vikings and Dragons coexisted. And this movie carries on that tradition with a few new twists. Since I just mentioned it, why not start by looking into the background designs? As the franchise already elaborated that there is much more to this world than just the island of Burke, it allows the animators to create new lands to explore and even have a moment to show this hidden world as this multicolored utopia for the dragons. And I believe it's your destiny to one day find this hidden world. 
but rather it be a new place or somewhere familiar, they're always a sight to behold because of the careful amount of detail put onto everything, including the realistic vegetation to have them look like real valleys and forests that people could explore. Even with places like Burke or wherever the Vikings would go, they always adapt to their environment, even when they can be overcrowded by dragons. When looking into the inhabitants of these lands, the designs of the characters did not update as much as the second one did, since the film takes place only a year after the events of 2. But there are a few minor changes on their features, like with their hair. But it is cool how they got an upgrade on their armor to have them look like their respective dragon. As for the character animation, the movements are made to be down to earth, which matches with the textures that are very noticeable and both help add into the sense of realism to make the feature look believable. If there is one thing that the visuals play with the most in this feature, it would be with the Night Furies. Sure, there are other new dragons that are highly prominent to present new abilities to supply a whole bunch of engaging action scenes, but with the plot of Toothless finding a mate, it allows the animators to really explore all the capabilities, emotions, and abilities that a Night Fury can do, along with a few surprises and some great flying sequences. How to Train Your Dragon always has the reputation of having some of the finest animation produced by DreamWorks, and this one continues that legacy. The Characters Among all the characters, Hiccup would often be viewed as the star of How to Train Your Dragon with Toothless by his side on their adventure. This time, however, Toothless would take center stage, as a big part of this is about him meeting a female Knife Fury, a surprising discovery since many have thought that he was the only one alive of his species. On top of his role as the Alpha Dragon, Toothless would have to face the tough decision where he might end up choosing either to take care of all the dragons himself with his new partner, or stick with his old friend to help the people of Burke and the dragons that reside there. What works so well with him is that he and the Life Fury still behave like animals where they don't talk or present a whole lot of human mannerisms, but still express emotions that are easy to read for the audience to know how they feel resulting in Toothless to be one of the few mainstream characters where the animators are the true actors that brought him to life. However, that doesn't mean Hiccup doesn't have a big role in this film. In the third installment, it presents a new Hiccup where he would fully become the Chief of Burke, making the big decisions of his village and having the responsibility of taking care of not just the dragons, but also the people. That familiar side of him is still present where his ultimate goal is to have peace between humans and dragons, but now that mission has to be challenged, where he must find what is best for his people and for his best friend. Astrid would be by his side to help him with those choices, since she would count as Hiccup's human best friend and aid to fully explore what he's looking for. As for the other characters, most of them would just deliver a running gag each, like Stout Loud trying to impress Valka, Fish Legs taking care of a baby Gronkle, Tough Nut giving Hiccup advice on being marriage material, Rough Nut being the knucklehead of the group, and Gobber with his superstition on Hobgobblers. And then there is the villain of the feature, Grimmel the Grizzly. I do see what this movie wanted to do with him. Comparable to Hans Landa from Inglorious Bastards, Grimmel would put more emphasis on charisma and would use his smarts to make sure that he is always two or three steps ahead to get what he wants. Nothing's accidental when it comes to old Grimmel. He lives for the hunt, to get inside the mind of his prey, to control its every choice. It's all a game to him. In a way, he's like a metaphor for segregation and far-right ideologies, where he views humans superior to dragons and aims to make the Night Furies extinct while controlling the dragons as a way to gain power. However, his issue as a character is that he is very similar to Drago from the previous films to where Grimmel is almost a skinnier copy of him and for who he is, his payoff isn't as satisfying. The characters may need a bit of adjustments themselves, but they are still capable enough to fight their way into making this an awesome movie. What a powerful note to end on! How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World concludes the franchise in a strong and emotional way. 
It may not have packed as much of a punch as the second, but still slightly better constructed than the first with an engaging story, the same likable characters, the awe-inspiring animation, and lots of great flying, action, and heartwarming moments we've come to expect from the dragons. Rather, if you casually enjoy the previous films, or if you're a hardcore fan that would even watch all the TV shows, I definitely recommend checking this one out. I'm sure some tears will be shed from some Dragon fans, and it will be sad to say goodbye to Hiccup and Toothless, but at least I'll be happy to know that I can bid them farewell with the Animat Seal of Approval. One day I'll find the Hidden World and seal it up so that people and dragons will fight no more.